Hi, welcome to Steve's car. Cause we are in Steve's car. Do you remember that? Welcome to the girls' room. Where's that from? I don't know, but free marketing. That's why I'm an influencer. It's marketing left, right, and center. Fuck off. Oh my God, Steve's gonna kill me. Wait. Steve might dump me, you guys. Firstly, I made him park here. And secondly, since being with me, he's had a ridiculous amount of car parking charges. It's like, I'm his unlucky charm. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's not funny. <sighs> anyway, moving on to something a little bit more positive. Look at my setup. We got some caffeine. Some Fanta, I've already drank half of this though. Water of hydrate before you caffeinate. Joan of Virtue, love her. And some blubs. Love a blub. And need a snack when I'm chatting, you know? You asked me some questions on my Instagram. Do you know what? I still find filming myself quite awkward, but some of the questions you asked were great and I feel like it's a great way for you guys to get to know me a little better. So why the heck not? Also, to everyone that's DM'd me saying, can you make your videos longer? Girl, do you know how hard it is to film? <laughs> Hoping I get better with practice. I just don't think that I know enough words to film a YouTube video that's longer than 13 minutes. So let's see how we get on today, shall we? Let's get straight into it, I guess. Mm. I have so many random notes. We're doing a non-running related Q&A today. Maybe I'll do another running related one. I would like to know your CV, what school, where you worked, etc. Let's start from like 16, shall we? Otherwise, it's just too much history. I went to a boarding school because my parents' divorce was really messy. I worked at Tesco Express when I was 16, got sacked. I, I worked at Lush when I was 17. I then started running social media accounts as a side hustle. So I wasn't an influencer, I was just getting in contact with small businesses and asking if they wanted support with their social media accounts. And I did that for a little bit of pocket money until, all the way up until I was like 25. Actually, a lot of business owners don't know how to create cool content. They also just don't have the time to, and I really enjoyed it. And I also really enjoyed the pocket money. So I was like, why not me? I had no editing software. I had no understanding of business. I was just a slightly delulu fool with a creative brain and I wanted some pocket money. I guess I went to university at Sheffield Hallam where I did Spanish and international business. I lived in Madrid for a couple of years where I went to university and also worked at Oxford University Printing Press. Graduated and then pretty much up until I became an influencer, I worked in SEO. All the way up until I became an influencer, I still did content creation as a side hustle. I still ran social media accounts as a side hustle because even though I had that nine to five, she still wanted that pocket money, folks. What is your advice to someone that feels a little lost? Okay, I'd like to preface this by saying that I absolutely do not have my shit together. I am not where I thought I would be at my age. I'm about to turn 30. I feel like everyone around me is having kids, getting pregnant, doing jobs that make their parents proud. <laughs> I really resonate with feeling a little bit lost because I feel like I felt like that for a long time. But I think there is a lot of comfort to be found in the fact that everyone does feel a little bit lost. Everyone does go through that. Even in success, you feel lost life is really overwhelming and i think knowing that everyone around you has been through it is going through it is helpful also there's a surprising amount of freedom in being lost i ran this question by steve and he actually gave me this quote if you know what you want to be in life then you will become it and that is your punishment and that is so true like before i did this job but when i was just creating content willy-nilly and having a good time there was no structure to it i feel like i was super like way more creative there was nothing expected of me but now that i've defined this as my job role there's obviously a lot less freedom so i feel like if you can try and enjoy it a little bit i hope that helps whilst that may not have been the best advice for you i do really empathize and have fully gone through what you're feeling so just be secure in the knowledge that you're not alone in feeling that way there's nothing wrong with you for feeling that way and it is very normal that you're feeling that way but my dms are always open should you need just someone to talk to blah, blah, blah. what's your hair wash routine uh, i wash my hair once a week there it is, there I said it. I, pr I pretty much load up my hair with hair masks day to day. So the first couple days, it will just be pretty frizzy, pretty clean, and I'll I'll leave it. And then from days two till seven, I will load it up with hair masks and oil, just because I like that slicked back look. Also because I can't be asked because it's always sweaty anyway. So my hair might as well marinate in something that's gonna do it some good. Whilst I only wash my hair once a week, I'm half Indian, half Kenyan, so I have very thick, wiry hair, so it just doesn't get greasy. So I am quite lucky like that, but then, a negative to that is that I have thick wiry hair everywhere, which is why I get laser. My breast reduction pre-op and post-op. There's a lot of information that I could share around this. And I have a playlist on my TikTok, which I'll link in the description below. And there are some pictures in the playlist of what I looked like before getting the breast reduction. I grew up having pretty large boobs. I think I was a D cup when I was like 12. I got a lot of the wrong attention. 
um i was i had back pain i was uncomfortable all of the things strict indian family that wouldn't allow me to dress how i wanted because my boobs would always be out whatever blah 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 blah, blah. fast forward to being 20 and deciding that i wanted a breast reduction i remember going to the doctors and the doctors telling me that i would need to lose some weight before they considered giving me a breast reduction so i did and my breast stayed the same size i kept going back i kept going back crying i kept going back telling them about how poor my mental health was about how how much pain i was in about how much i couldn't do any sports about how i couldn't go on holidays with my friends they did not have the capacity to let me get them done on the nhs however i was fortunate enough to have a mum that could afford for me to get breast reduction surgery so i did i remember going into the pre-op examination and explaining to the surgeon the size that i wanted and him telling me that they were too small and i was adamant i was adamant that i wanted smaller boobs i got my way and i ended up getting i think smaller b like small b cups and i'm so glad that i listened to my instinct and went slightly smaller than what he had suggested because obviously time has passed your body fluctuates as soon as i gain weight the weight goes straight to my breasts honestly the post-op was so easy luckily my mum is self-employed so could stay at home and look after me for a solid week she did everything for me she washed my hair she fed me she basically just made, had to make sure that i didn't raise my arms above here and i was back working out fairly quickly the hardest part for me was the medication that just made me feel so nauseous and it's this vicious circle of the medication making you nauseous so you don't want to eat and then you don't eat which makes you more nauseous so if you if you do end up having a breast reduction it's just really important that you eat even though the medication is making you feel ill because you will heal quicker and you'll be able to get back to normal life and you'll be able to get back to movement a lot quicker than you would expect but i love them it's changed my life to be honest i'm even at a point where i'm considering getting another breast reduction i got them done when i was 20 i'm now 29 and they've grown back so much because obviously your weight fluctuates a lot and my breasts are the place that i carry most of my weight so the weight came back if i was to have another operation however i think that i would get silicone because apparently you can still breastfeed however i don't actually know that for a fact i need to do my research but yeah just so you know i am potentially considering another booby job i'm actually having a really nice time in here <laughs> As a fellow stepmom, what's it like navigating a relationship with your partner's son? The hardest part for me was always everyone else's expectation. Me being a stepmom was not something that my family wanted for me. And on the flip side, I entered someone's family whereby that child was their be all and end all. So I didn't have anyone within my family to talk to about the fact that I was struggling. And then within Steve's family, I had to also come across like I was super excited to be in the child's life. But the truth is that it took me a minute to adjust. He is an incredible little boy and I absolutely adore him. But I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed when I first became a stepmom. I thought that all of my thoughts about struggling to fit into his life just made me evil. I remember going onto forums and I remember Googling why am I finding it so difficult to be a stepmom? Why am I not enjoying it? And all of the forums were like, You're a terrible person, children are a gift, get over yourself, you're put on this planet to look after kids. And yeah, that just solidified how bad I was already feeling. And that probably showed up in the way that I parented because I was very nervous. I was very tearful a lot of the time, but I got really lucky because our son is the kindest, funniest, most creative, most accepting little boy. Also because I entered his life when he was two and a half or three years old, I'm kind of all he knows. Steven, a dad, he's very fun. He's very loving. He's very happy-go-lucky. Whereas I do think that I am maternal. So I did have some instincts that steve didn't so i do sort of think that i'm able to show up for him well but don't get me wrong it, it is really difficult i do feel a lot of guilt that we live in separate homes and separate cities i also tend to look at myself as more of the fun aunt ultimately he has a mum and a dad you can never replace either of those positions however a child can never have enough love i definitely have the energy of the crazy aunt and he does seem to enjoy that i hope so anyway <laughs> also i mean six years in it's still a massive learning curve i still don't have anyone to talk to about this so there's so much that i get wrong there's so much that i still get upset about there are lots of highs and lows but you are not your thoughts so if there's ever anything that you're struggling with if ever you have thoughts that aren't particularly nice that doesn't mean that you are not particularly nice okay it just takes time you can't expect to walk into any relationship and immediately fall in love that love and respect will grow you just have to allow it time i don't know if this is a really shitty thing to say but i've stopped caring about other people's opinions as i've learnt my purpose as i've defined what i want to do in this life I care a lot less what other people think so if family members aren't on your side really work on yourself so that should they pick you apart you know exactly who you want to be and you can still show up as a strong human being for that child Ooh. 
are so deep. Obsessed. If it's got a tint or a shine, then I just want it. Nay, I need it. How do you handle fights with Steve that you mention on here? I mean, not well. <laughs> we fight all the time. I want to do another video with Steve discussing how I moved out when I lived with him. Honestly, I am pretty immature in arguments. I'm also very emotional. When I'm sad, I just shut down and don't speak. The reason I show when me and Steve are struggling online is because sometimes I see other people's relationships and it makes me feel sad about my own. The one thing me and Steve do is we never walk out of a room on an argument. I'm someone that really marinates and takes things really personally. It's the only thing that I voiced to Steve when we first got together. I grew up seeing a very angry and abusive relationship. I asked him early on in the relationship, should we ever have an argument that we wouldn't have to fix it there and then, but we would remain in the same room together until we felt comfortable enough to readdress the situation. And I think because we do that, we never let it go too long. Like it never goes hours or days or weeks. We'll sit there until one of us feels comfortable to bring up the disagreement at hand and then we'll hash it out. Neither of us are also very aggressive people, so we never really raise our voices, but we do bicker quite a lot. Also, we're also both really aware that because we're both quite anxious people, sometimes we can both get really in our own heads and not really see the perspective of the other person. So sometimes sitting there in the discomfort and staring at each other allows us time to organize our thoughts and readdress the issue. But ultimately, yeah, we fight all the time. Something that might be interesting for you to know is that I, don't argue with anyone. I never voice my opinion. I never say what I want. So for me personally, as such a hefty people pleaser, I think the fact that I feel comfortable enough to speak up and tell him what I want is so rare because I don't do that in any other relationships. That proves to me that I feel safe. <sighs> First shit am I an adult moment? I have two, I have two for you. Okay, so the first one. So you know, when I lived in Spain, did you know that? I lived in Spain for a couple of years. I worked in Spain. I worked in Spain as part of my degree. I did an international business and Spanish degree. And when you move to Spain, you need something called an EA, which is, let me Google it actually. <laughs> a unique and exclusive number that is assigned to foreigners. So when I moved to Spain, when I moved to Madrid, I needed an EA. However, you can't get paid from your job without an EA and you can't get an EA without a payslip make it make sense so there i was 20 year old me in a new country trying to get an ea and the officers only speak spanish there and the people there only speak spanish and granted i did speak spanish but still it was my first moment in a new country where, where i was having to sort out paperwork and i was like shit i'm an adult and i'm on my own the fuck one more recently is when i moved to so i'm obviously in my new flat and i've been here for a few weeks but when i moved out from steve initially to come to london two and a half years ago me and steve were in a bit of a rocky patch because he didn't fully understand that i did still want to be with him I just wanted to pursue a career in London. So I probably wasn't calling him with every issue. I also am not that close to my dad. I don't really have many other figures in my life that I could call if I had a, an issue at home. And I managed to block my toilet. <laughs> Your girl didn't know how to fix it. I eventually figured out that I needed a plunger. And I remember walking down the street and buying a plunger. Brought that plunger back to my flat. The plunger was the wrong size for the toilet. So off I popped on my second attempt to find a plunger that would fit better and I did eventually get one but that was a big oh shit I'm an adult moment life sure does throw some shit at you if you'll pardon the pun um, how did your relationship change with your brother as you got older well because of the divorce me and my brother were always although we may not have liked each other that much in younger years we enjoyed fighting we loved hating each other because my mum and dad were separate whenever we were thrust into new environments we were just glued to each other's sides like we did really support each other despite not liking each other growing up my brother also thought that i was an idiot like he'd always he'd be like why is savannah going out drinking why is savannah not trying hard at school i think he just thought i was some really annoying rebel and he would always tell my mum on me <laughs> my brother is very intellectual and i'm a little bit more creative and because of that we struggle to connect for a few years despite really loving each other we adore each other we're just very different people and i remember growing up and wondering if we would be friends if we weren't siblings then i went to uni and moved to spain so bear in mind when i was younger i went to boarding school and then i went to uni in a different country so it was a huge portion of my life that i wasn't really around my brother and then my little brother went to university and that's when he really grew up. That's when he really learned to give me grace. That was his first experience of being around other people, of being around other women my age, of having some real life experiences. After he came home from university, he became the most kind, loving human being. When we both got into the working, he's five years younger than me, by the way. 
But after university, we were both in the working world. Although we did get on really well, we still weren't living together and we had very different career paths. He's a finance boy. I worked in marketing and I was quite creative. So I do think he still found it quite hard to understand the kind of person I was. But alongside my marketing job, I was doing content creation. That was earning me some pocket money. That eventually became my full-time job, as you know it is now. As he watched me follow that path, his respect for me just grew. He has had my back non-stop. That was a lot of spiel, I'm sorry. But basically, now we're at a point where we just adore and respect each other so, so much. How much do you make from Instagram? Every time I mark a post with ad, I'm earning money from that post. What happens is a brand will get in contact with me to create a video. If I approve of the product, if it's a, if it's a brand that I already love, then we will negotiate a fee. I get paid a one-off amount for that video. If the, if the brand wants to put some paid spend behind that video, then I effectively get paid per person that sees that video. My fee is then inflated. Does that make sense? I don't feel comfortable necessarily sharing the amount that I make from Instagram, but I'm very happy to share with you that it's more than what I was earning doing a nine to five in marketing. Also, if any of you are looking to get into content creation and need some support with pricing yourself, I'm really happy to let you know what I was earning at your following or what I would charge should I ever hit your following. Yeah. How do you balance freelance work, content creation and go with the flow? Balance? Do you know what? Everyone's balance is completely different. My balance might not be healthy for you. Oh. Someone just took a photo of me. Cool. I personally don't actually have a social life. And for right now, I've just moved into central London. My bills are excessively high. My outgoings are huge. For me, I think I found really solid balance. My priorities lie in making sure I can afford my life in London, staying healthy and being a good daughter, girlfriend, sibling. I don't really have any friends here yet, so I don't really go out. Every trip that you see me post on social media, I'm obviously creating content around. People around me keep telling me that I'm probably gonna face burnout soon because I do create a lot of content. I mean, you guys probably see that from my Instagram story, right? I'm always on my phone. But the issue is that I really enjoy it and I feel like I don't set things up for social media. What you see is exactly the situation that I'm in at that current moment. I don't act anything out. You get my actual real-time reactions. I feel like I've gone from saying I have really good balance to highlighting that all I do is make content. <laughs> but to be honest, this is what I need right now. So I don't think I'm wrong in pursuing that. How do you manage your relationship not living with Steve? It's tough. It is really tough. Everyone else our age is settling down, having kids, living together. But ultimately, I don't look at anyone's relationship and think I want what you have. So I don't know why I'm feeling pressure to lay out my relationship to look exactly like theirs. We benefit from my life in London and also his life in Essex. The fact that we go between the two can feel really fun. We just miss each other, but ultimately missing each other allows us to work on our businesses and, and solidify good futures for ourselves individually. Some weeks it is definitely harder than others, especially because my mental health hasn't been the best. I don't really know how to speak about this, but I've had a few panic attacks recently. And as I've mentioned, I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of people around me. So when that happens, he's the person that I need and we don't live together. But I am an adult and I've made these life choices and I love being here. So we're just trying to figure, figure stuff out the best that we can. And 97% of the time we fucking love it. Love it. It's, it's quite difficult because I spent so much time on my own as a child and also being terrified of relationships that I never learned how to be in a healthy partnership. Did someone say couples therapy? Do you know what? As soon as I have the disposable income for it, we will absolutely be doing couples therapy because I would love to be proactive instead of reactive within our relationship. How do you stay slim and eat what you eat? What do you mean by that though? Because you see me posting a croissant once a week. Do you really believe that that's what I eat every day? No, that's just that was just the only thing interesting enough to make content about. One or two croissants a week. That's not the be all and end all. I also do quite a lot of exercise. Just so you know, the reason that I haven't done a what I eat in a day is because what I eat every day isn't healthy. What I eat every day isn't ideal for everyone. What I, what I eat in a day wouldn't be good for me to film for my own mental health. I don't do a what I eat in a day because I'm not a nutritionist. I love whole foods. I don't love cooking. If any meal prep companies would love to sponsor me, wouldn't say no. Do you know how often I eat Baby Bell's eggs and raw carrots for dinner just because 
<laughs> it is easy. That's also why I don't do what I eat in a day, is because my what I eat in a day is would be appalling. <laughs> how did you start your Instagram journey and how did you get the confidence for it? Are you full-time influencing? Yes, I'm full-time influencing. So something that I actually did is I created a TikTok page and made my handle Confuse Indian Girl. I then blocked every single person that I knew. Everyone. Barely, I don't think I told anyone that I was doing it. I made content for a few months without anyone I know seeing the content. I think I got to 15,000 followers on TikTok before I told my family and Steve what was going on. I remember them begging to see it and I was like, absolutely not, not till I hit 50,000. If that, plus that might never happen for me. And then it did and they were like, Savannah, now you have to show us. And I was like, fine. And then I ended up showing them and they were surprised. This world is just not something that any of us ever expected for me. <laughs> Also, just so you know, showing up on every social media platform has been embarrassing as hell. But ultimately, the people that you think are judging you, are they paying your bills? Ashley from school that was a little bitch. Is she gonna buy you that top you've been saving up for? No, so why do you care what she thinks? If posting is what's gonna earn you more money and get you that pair of jeans that you've been craving, who gives a fuck about Ashley? Also, you don't think that I don't still get those dreaded nerves every time I hit post. It's still terrifying. That hasn't gone away but I also think I'm fairly new at it. And when I speak to other influencers, they say that those nerves do die with time. This is really forward, but do you have a judgmental Asian family? I get judged for everything. <sighs> I don't really know how to talk about this without airing my dirty laundry. This is really tough. I try to remind myself that they're being judgmental because they don't understand. Just like I do when comparing myself to other couples, sometimes I look at my family members and remind myself that I don't want their life. So, why am I following their direction and taking their judgment to heart if I don't want to be them? I need to speak to my family more about this and find out what they're comfortable with me sharing here before I discuss this in any more detail. But I feel you deeply. Sorry for appearing looking like this, but I was out to dinner with some people last night and had a realization of how much my upbringing plays on my mind consistently. Like so much the conversation I couldn't jump into because my upbringing had been so different. So whilst, yeah, I don't have much advice here, if feeling judged by a family is something that still alienates you from people constantly, then really, 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 I feel you. What did you start at university? Spanish and international business? Was I smart? Nope. I was too busy trying to understand the male species to focus on my studies. When did you start recording and when did your account get so big? Uh, genuinely, my account growing was an accident. When I created my TikTok account, it was because I just got signed by a modeling agency and I wanted something to document. I wanted to get some cool content, maybe use that as a CV for modeling. In those initial weeks, I just really enjoyed TikTok, so I kept creating. I'm not really sure how my account grew. The details that I do know are that I got signed by a management agency in October of 2022. My TikTok was at around 25,000. My Instagram was at two or three thousand it's now october of 2023 and it is where it is i honestly just think showing up consistently and the fact that i enjoy the content that i create i think that that's visible in the content i actually don't know if anything that i'm saying is actually helpful but <laughs> dems the facts do you feel like a stepmom i feel more like a fun aunt or big older sis because whilst my opinion does matter within the relationship and i get to help support with a lot of the issues Ultimately, my say isn't the final one. So I definitely try and just bring more fun to the equation. I do love the two of them a lot though. And whilst I'm not sure that I feel like a stepmom per se, especially because I don't live with them and I do feel a lot of guilt for that, I do really feel like a part of their family. I love them a lot. Why don't you and your boyfriend live together? It will help with saving money. Mm, depends how you look at it because actually living in London by myself has enabled me to earn more money. Also, I'm not someone that really values being in a relationship. Like I love being in a relationship but really like who I am on my own. Really appreciate my individuality. I really like my independence. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that I don't need to live with Steve to save money. Also, can we normalize not living with our partners? Because I don't necessarily think it's the best thing for everyone. Like as much as I adore and love and miss Steve, I don't think it's the best thing for us right now. We're both thriving individually. And that's a-okay. Can I share more about my anxiety? It's really weird because I don't know what's wrong with me. My highs are so high and I can be really hyper. But when I'm sad, when things get to me, when a person makes a comment, when something gets into my head, it just knocks me sideways. I post myself being so hyper on my Instagram stories. But then on the flip side, on the mornings that I am really down, I can't just record myself crying and post that to my story. But 
I do think about it. I've been really enjoying life recently, but I feel so guilty for using the word anxiety and saying I feel anxious. I don't know why, but for me, it's that overwhelming level of sickness and nervousness and wondering why you can't connect with people, wondering why you feel so drained after having a conversation, wondering why you overthink every word that comes out of your mouth. It makes me feel like I'm going to throw up. It makes me feel like I'm going to be physically ill. It sits here. I've, I've told you guys that I have therapy, but I also hate it because I feel like I've latched on so much to my therapist because I need people to like me so much. I need to feel like she loves me to feel safe talking to her so everyone has shit so it's really hard to just call someone up and say i'm struggling today isn't it although if you were telling me that i'd be like come on you're important speak up you have to share what you're feeling and going through but it's so hard when you're in it things are really good i really think that i'm someone that will just always have anxiety did the laser make you completely smooth like a brazilian wax would well what's really funny is that the laser works really well in some areas and not in other areas so this is definitely tmi and you're definitely going to be like savannah why have you put this on, on the internet but I'm like hairless right now because you have to shave in between sessions but there's this tiny patch like at the heart like literally right there oh shit so I'm almost completely hairless except from tiny patches sometimes I like to grow it out and look like a little Dalmatian it's funny I think I've had like seven treatments so far I don't know if you can see this I used to have incredibly hairy arms and there's only very light fluffy hairs currently it is a big financial and time investment but for me it's really worth it because my hair is so thick and wiry that it's just uncomfortable. Obviously I'm very lucky in the last few treatments have been gifted, however, I did pay for it myself beforehand and it works really well for me. Just not so much in those random patches. <laughs> Tips for building confidence. Honestly, I feel like fake it till you make it. I really believe that you will become the things that you say to yourself. This is so gross and I hate that I used to do this, but when I first started dating Steve, I always used to tell him, I love you so much more than I could ever love me. And it became my truth. Like I just wouldn't look after myself and I would value him far above me. I don't believe that anymore. Every time I post something on social media, I do literally have to sit there and repeatedly chant people like me, people like me. Being Delulu is the only Salulu. I feel like I'm giving no valuable answers here. I'm so sorry. As a fellow brown girly with a white BF and mainly white friends, do you ever feel isolated because of it? All the time. I don't feel brown enough for my brown family and I don't feel white enough for my white friends. I actually find that spending time with people drains me so much. I come away and I just feel super emotional and tired. I tend to go to functions with my family and be who I think they want me to be. And then I'll be around my white friends and my white partner and be who I think they want me to be. And what happens is I ended up feeling very tired and emotionally drained because of it. Steve sees it a mile off and he calls me out for it and he always tells me to have more confidence and be myself and to stop doing what's expected of me and to do what I want. But the problem is I don't know what I want because I've been told what to do for so long. Why did you change your name on Deed Poll? My name was Savannah Makeshi and I changed my name to Savannah Satchdev because I don't have much relationship with my dad. With everything that my mum went through, I felt like this was the ultimate way to show her that I loved and supported her life decisions. So I took her name and also, her name has a little bit more heritage to it as well. How you got started in content creation and advice for those wanting to commit to doing it every day, even if it's shit. When I first started, the goal was never to be an influencer. The goal was to be a content creator and do UGC content for brands because you can earn pretty well from that. UGC is user generated content. It's basically when you create content and then the brands post it on their page. So you never have to be embarrassed by posting any influencer looking content on your own page. You never have to be an influencer you literally create content and then you sell it to the brand. I saw other UGC content creators online. I'd also obviously done content creation for a few years generally and social media management. And in 2022, I committed to posting a piece of content every single day for a month. I remember being at like birthday parties, events, family things, and just being like, I'm, can I just go outside for a second? And I'd record a video and post it, even if it was shit, even if it was shocking. But I had just made that commitment to myself. And more often than not, it's the random piece of content that you think's appalling that will go viral. And then once I'd got to the end of that month, my following had grown quite a lot. Brands started to get in contact and I started to get gifted stuff. So I started to feel like an influencer. So my advice for you is to show up even when it feels cringy. Also, anyone that judges you is an absolute bellend. If they're judging you, they don't have a friend. If it helps create an account that's private, like I did, like I was confused Indian girl and I blocked everyone that I knew and I just kept it to myself until it had grown enough that I was proud of it. Honestly, like I said earlier, the people that judging you aren't paying your bills. And there's so much space and so much money in this industry. The sooner you get started, the better. What are you waiting for? Life is short. Start tomorrow. Just start doesn't matter if it's shit, just go for it. Plus, do you think the people that you look up to and that you think are really good, do you think that they just got where they are without practice? No, they had to start exactly where you are now. And it's important that you remind yourself of that. 
everyone has been shit and at the beginning at some point have you ever struggled with ed behavior love you lots love you too honestly yes i was never taught to respect my hunger cues i was never allowed to like you ate the food that was put in front of you even if you just had dinner and then you went to another family member's house you ate the meal that they put in front of you so when i went to school i was a lot bigger than a lot of my peers and i was quite bullied for it i was also one of the only people of color and i immediately had the switch that went off in my head and decided that looking like the other girls and being like the other girls would make me pretty i think i was about 15 years old when i went on a diet i lost a lot of weight and people immediately started to compliment me it did get a little bit out of hand i just wanted to be dainty and small and wear the same clothes as all the other girls and it resulted in me having a significantly unhealthy mindset if you have been through anything like that then i personally don't think that you ever fully recover i think that they are thoughts that you will forever have to battle steve also did like a mental health course a little while ago and he was telling me that people that come from a stricter background and that feel like they don't have much control over their lives or their futures tend to get really focused on the things that they do feel that they have control over so potentially within the south asian community there are more eating disorders than people might assume sorry my camera's currently freaking out so i thought i'd just finish that here i don't actually know that for a fact it's just some conversations that we've had between ourselves and i guess that could make sense i'm in a whole different world now ultimately i have to show up every day and perform i also run some really cool races and i can't do that without nourishing my body so it's been really really cool to distance myself from aesthetics but i also say that as someone that looks at most of the women around her and sees some disordered patterns even within my family sometimes i look at them and i'm like as if you do that to your own body I think that these issues are still very prevalent. And actually, this is a point that one of my friends made, Cassia, recently, not me. But I fully agree that anyone selling a nutrition plan or an online training plan or anything like that, that they should have to disclose any disordered patterns that they have faced in the past. Because otherwise, you're buying a product from someone without fully understanding their history. And I do think that could be dangerous. How did you have discussion with Steve about living separate but staying together? I'm going to do a separate video on that with Steve because I think he deserves to chime in. And it also probably could have done things better, so it would be interesting to hear his perspective. But yeah, we'll do a video on that. Why and when do you decide to get lip fillers done and what's the experience been like? I love it. I really love it. I didn't hate my lips before. I'm just a sucker for changing my aesthetic. Like I dye my hair all the time. I get tattoos. I get piercings. Also chopped all my hair off really recently. It is painful. It doesn't feel like kittens are licking you. But I really like the way it looks and I'm really happy with mine. Last time I got it done... I got 0.5 millilitres in them and I'm really happy. Steve says that you can really see my lip filler from my side profile. I don't know if you can tell. Them. I like them. I think I look great. The swelling the days after though. Ridiculous. The first time I got it done, I had a 9 to 5. Going into work the day after was embarrassing as hell. What's your favourite books? How about I tell you my favourite book? My favourite book is Shantaram. So good. I'm obsessed with it. I really recommend that you read it. Um, I'm also currently reading Akatar, but any book recommendations you've got, please leave them in the comments, especially if they're smart. I love smart. I love reading smart. I love imagining smart. I just love, love, love smart. Anyway, my camera battery's gonna die. I love you all. Um, we'll be back soon for another Q&A. Mm, thank you for all the questions. Have a great week. Like and subscribe. Bye.